Welcome to Playfully Orange, our conversations on Thursday afternoons about arts and culture here in Central Florida. My guest today is Keith Smith. Welcome, Keith. Thanks, Terry. Good to be here. So, Keith, you grew up in Rochester, New York. Um, yes. And did you grow up in an artsy family? Uh, I did not grow up in an artsy family. However, um, my father was a scientist. My mother worked, uh, stayed at home and worked from home, quite honestly, as a, as a homemaker. But um, the one thing that they did do is they exposed me to arts and culture um, very, as a very young child and frequently. So while they themselves were not artsy, um, I, I had exposure to it. My mother liked to sing in choir. So, you know, that was a passion of hers as well. And um, that, was, that was really, I think I attribute my passion for it to the early exposure that I had through my parents. And you uh, came to Central Florida as a young man and um, have been involved in the arts ever since? Yes, I have. I actually, I was involved um, in the arts growing up uh, as a child. I've always had this creative side. In fact, um, recently, as I was going through some belongings from my parents' house, I just came across so many different things that reminded me about how creative um, and creative uh, approaches have been a theme for me throughout my entire life, whether it was putting on puppet shows in my parents' garage for the neighborhood kids or, you know, doing magic shows at birthday parties or being involved in shows in school. Um, there was always this common thread of creativity. And, um, you know, I see that throughout my life, but uh, it's, it's just been something that's always been a passion of mine growing up. And I've been really lucky to have just been able to continue throughout my life to find areas where I can apply that um, that love and that passion. Well, you came here for Disney to perform. Uh, funny story. Uh, that was the original intent. Yes, um, I actually um, I. I I love theater. My bachelor's is in theater as well. And um, while I love being on the stage, I love the performance side of it. I always had an interest in the business side of theater. And, um, you know, my goal wasn't necessarily to be an individual who uh, packed up and went to New York City to try to make my big break into Broadway. Um, but maybe the business side of running a theater or being part of the administrative piece of it. So that um, that was something that someone once said to me about, you know, have you ever thought of working for Disney? Because that's their business, right? Their business is entertainment. And it had never crossed my mind. So I tried actually through auditions several times um, through Disney when they would do regional auditions throughout the country and um, just didn't make it that way. So I finally just packed up all my belongings in a U-Haul and Went with my partner Mark and down to Florida we went. So uh, that was it. I walked into the casting building at Disney and said, I'm here, hire me. And the rest is history. So were you hired as a performer? No, I was hired in attractions at, at the time it was the Disney MGM Studios. It's now the Disney Hollywood Studios. And um, that was my first foray. Um, it was an attraction though, where I got to lend some of my ability to be comfortable in front of an audience uh, up on stage. It was uh, called Superstar Television. So um, it was working with the guests, helping prepare them and move them through that attraction where they had the opportunity to appear in different um, TV skits that are familiar to all of us. So I could leverage that, that skill and that background. And then I kind of found things to fill in the gaps on the creative side outside of work. So I did things like working at Terror on Church Street, uh, which is no longer around, but you know, got to perform and, and uh, lend my creative skills there. And then also uh, finding opportunities to do different shows um, in the community. But then you moved into administration, right? Well, I think part of that, yeah, part of that was through kind of my work is um, my, I've, my role at Disney is in human resources. And I've, I've kind of been drawn to that type of work um, since before coming to the company. And um, the kind of that piece of it is I fell into um, the Garden Theater, which is where I've been involved heavily and am on the board for the Garden Theater. Um, but I happened to be working with a gentleman whose wife was very closely involved in the uh, renovation of that theater. And I just kind of said, hey, you know, here's my background. And I love to do this. If there's any way I can help out, let me know. And, you know, it was funny that, you know, she, when he introduced me to her, she said, what am I going to do with an HR guy? Right. Like, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> it's a, we're a theater group. Um, and it turns out that I actually um, engaged with the Garden Theater 
by facilitating one of their board retreats as the theater was starting to uh, build up and getting prepared for opening was how, is, how are we gonna organize to support the work? How do we wanna structure? What roles do we need to have people playing? And uh, I really got heavily involved in that. And by the end of that work session, I was on the board and uh, the rest is history. Great, and now you are the chair of the Orange County Arts and Cultural Affairs Advisory Council. I am, and uh, it's such a great honor to do that and such a great opportunity to be part of that. It's, um, the, the council has really exposed me to arts and culture offerings in Central Florida and the Orange County that I didn't even know existed prior to this. Um, and it's really exciting to see what's happening in that space. Well, when you arrived several decades ago, uh, we did not have the kind of resources that Rochester, New York had. But now as you travel the country, um, how do we compare? Yeah, so true. You know, Rochester is a rich culture scene, especially with the Eastman School of Music up there and, uh, you know, a rich cultural background. And I did notice that gap when I first moved down here 30 years ago. You know, Central Florida and Orlando were very different 30 years ago. Um, and I now see, uh, you know, in, in travels as I go through the country, you know, there were many times in those early days where I was trying to find a place from an arts and culture perspective to engage and be part of. Um, and I would travel other places to kind of fill that need. Now, uh, I don't find that happening. I, you know, I typically will travel and go, you know what, we have that in Orlando where we have an offering that's different than that or unique uh, to our region that we didn't have 30 years ago. And I just see that continuing to grow as Central Florida continues to grow. Is there anything that we are missing? Oh, wow. Um, I, I, there's always, there will always be something missing, right? Because there's always um, diverse offerings. There's, our culture is changing and um, every culture brings unique and special arts and culture with it. And as we continue to grow and evolve, I think we're going to continue to identify areas where there's an offering that's not being provided um, for, for either a, a subset of our uh, community or for the entire community. And I think people always look for a place that they feel comfortable with, that they can go and um, kind of fills their soul with something that they know. And I just don't know how we would ever be able to satisfy all of those needs for individuals. So I think, um, I think we're gonna continue to grow. I think every day we're gonna say, gosh, wouldn't it be great if we had this? And then two years down the road, we're gonna find another opportunity with the same, same scenario. Well, what has been the most memorable, impactful arts experience that you've had? You know, uh, I am gonna go back in the way back machine and I'm gonna say it was my freshman year in high school and um, we did The Music Man and I had the opportunity to play Winthrop, uh, Peru. I was not six foot one at that point in time like I am today, um, but it was really, it was my first, I mean, I had done some shows in like middle school and things like that, but it was really, um, it was really a life-changing experience for me because I remember the experience of doing the show, of building relationships with, my friends in, in school and people that maybe I wouldn't necessarily spend a lot of time with. But it was, I, I significantly remember like when that show closed, I, I went into depression for like days afterwards because it was this, just this amazing sense of loss, which the, if you're in theater or in anything that comes together for a creative endeavor, and then you kind of go off and do your own thing, the more you do it, the more you get used to it. But, you know, it, it, a freshman in high school, never having done it before, um, I think I got so emotionally connected to the experience, to the product and to the people. Um, and I think that's what really, it, it stands with me today. Music Man is my favorite show to this day, I think for that reason. And um, it, it really shaped my, my love and my appreciation for specifically for theater, but also for the arts. Well, and Winthrop is such an emotional, uh, you became Winthrop at the beginning of the play after the play was over. Uh, yes, exactly right. Yes. Depressed and uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's great talking to you, Keith. Thank you for your work with the Garden Theater. Thank you for your work with uh, Arts and Cultural Affairs for Orange County. Um, we're glad that you are in this community and have made this your home. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And the same to you, Terry. Thanks for everything that you do for arts and culture in Orange County and beyond. And, and thank you all for watching uh, this diverse, uh, nope, our Playfully Orange conversation today. I do another conversation on Tuesdays called Diverse Orange, talking about diversity in our community. But we've got a great community. Get out and explore it and have a great day, everyone. Bye.